Hello and welcome back to Fearsome Friday with Johnny Tiger. Technically, uh, I can, I could call this Toy Thursday uh, because it's close enough to midnight that I could have just done that. But I like the ring of this, a Fearsome Friday, uh, totally in the spirit of what we're talking about today. Uh, also Halloween and a scary action figure and all that. So let's go with that. Here's some Friday with Johnny Tiger, and this is October 29, 2021. But before we start, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to Me Time Aesthetics. Me Time Aesthetics. If you are looking for a good spa experience, nail shop, waxing, uh, head and shoulder massage here in the local Richmond, Vancouver area, then congratulations because you watch this episode your search is over me time and it's exactly what it sounds like me like m-e and time t-i-m-e aesthetics me time aesthetics uh it's one of the best that i've ever uh been to uh this afternoon kitten went and got her nails done and uh got some nice spa treatment you know all that girly stuff uh and of course uh being very supportive i went along uh to make sure that everything went okay no uh, i will say kitten and i we have been to many 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 spas and nail shops and most of them basically are the same they sorry to say barely speak any english uh they are very rushed very brusque they try to rush you in and rush you out, and uh, they don't really uh, bother to make things more comfortable than bare essential. Uh, and they try to upsell you on a whole bunch of extra services that you didn't ask for in the first place. Okay, no, that's just very basic, very normal practice in nail salons and beauty shops, beauty parlors. Not so with me time aesthetic. Even though we were there for the first time, me time aesthetic, by the way, they are not paying me to do this. Uh, I just do it because they impress me so much. Me time aesthetic, even though we only been there for the first time, managed to make us feel that we were visiting some old, old friends. They were extremely friendly, extremely accommodating. Uh, and you, when you walk into there, you don't feel like you're walking to a nail salon you don't there's none of that chemical smell in the air there's none of that uh loud uh chatter in the foreign language that you don't understand and you wonder if they're making fun uh, of you behind your back no there's none of that you walk in there and it's very nice a very friendly asian lady uh they make you feel at home you just feel like you walk into a very well kept house rather than a commercial spa or store everything is clean everything is personalized they make sure that you're comfortable they make sure to chat with you and they didn't try to sell any extra services uh, in fact they are so personalized that next time they asked me if i could bring my guitar so i could uh, entertain them while they were doing nails and stuff like that so yeah uh, if you're looking for something that really friendly and really, really good, just like one of the best experiences as far as spas and salons that I uh, and Kitten have experienced, check out Me Time Aesthetics and let us know uh, if you enjoy it as much as we do. And yeah, don't be uh, shy. You can mention us to them. Uh, they might not know us as Johnny Tiger and Kitten, but if you mention the two totally blind people that came in, they know who you are talking about. Now, with that little bit of uh, impromptu uh, advertisement go, let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Now, Halloween is going to be upon us very soon, and after Halloween, we are going to step away from all these creepy horror uh, horror monster stuff and look at something else which kind of make me a little bit sad because 
I planned, I planned the heck out of these、uh, Halloween episodes, and I had so much lined up, and I wasn't expecting this to be done and over with so quickly.、Uh, time just seemed to pass us by, quicker and quicker every year. A few weeks ago, I was thinking, "Oh, it's going to be Halloween soon. We should show our list of scary action figures." And suddenly, whoops! We're at the very end. This is going to be the last episode of Toy Thursday before Halloween. So I'm going to bring out the big gun. Well, he's not that big. He's actually kind of small. But sometimes small creatures have heavy punch. Uh, sometimes good things come in small packages, as they say. Uh, it was a real mental struggle. There's just so many candidates to pick from, from goblins to zombies to mummies to werewolves to demons. Now, I love demons. Yeah, that just doesn't. Sound too right, does it? I, it's not that I'm any kind of like a demon worshiper or a satanic person. I'm not religious, so that means I don't really care one way or another, you demon or angel or whatever. Um, but when I say I love demons, I say it in the same spirit, uh, as someone who say they love alien, and it's for the same reason. You see, most of the horror stuff、uh, can get very generic after a while. <laughs> Zombies, you kind of expect what they 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 always look the same. You know, basically human, dead human, dying human, decaying, rotting, missing body parts, walking around kind of slow. You shoot them in the head, and they they fall down and they die.、Uh, mummy, always look the same. Desiccated corpse wrapped wrapped in bandages. And they have some powerful magic they can use. Werewolves again mostly look the same. Vampires mostly look the same. Now a lot of people like Alien because Alien there's no box, no corner, no cookie cutter. And when you talk about Alien, you're free to imagine anything you want from something that is basically、uh, humanoid. Or something that is like some kind of、uh, really twisted animal, or something that is totally weird, like a walking tree. And it's、uh, no one can say you're wrong. No one can say that that is not a alien because you no know, alien、it、can be anything, anything you want. And basically, demons are the same way. That's why I love demons, demon action figures, demon characters, because demonic entities. Can come in so many forms, and、uh, there are so many different types of demon. Just in the conventional way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, sometimes take a、uh, take a Google search and、uh, list of demonic types or entities in、uh, in in different culture in India, for example, in、uh, Greek mythology, for example,、uh, in Modern history, or in biblical uh, uh, sense, there's just so many different types. Like,、uh, it, not all the demons are like、uh, hoofs and horns and、uh, and and red skin and、uh, hold a pitchfork and all that stuff. A lot of them are, but there have been many, many different types, different shapes, different sizes of demon imagined into our. Uh, folklore and stories. So,、uh, last week we looked at、uh, the demon of vengeance, which was Pumpkinhead. This week we're going to look at、uh, a demon that is a lot smaller than Pumpkinhead, but no less dangerous. Probably, actually, more dangerous, if truth be told.、Uh, but where should we start the story? Hmm. Uh, let me start you guys with a little bit of a tragic tale, and this is a absolutely true story, a personal grief and sorrow 
that I recently have to endure, but because of this grief and sorrow, this bad experience, that we are where we are today, and we are able to、uh, look at this li- little demonic entity today. In the very beginning, in the very beginning, in the nineties, okay, that's a long, long time ago, almost like the beginning of time. Back in the nineties, there was a king of action figure, that was Todd McFarlane. I don't need to talk too much about that. If you guys been watching my review,、uh, my Toy Thursday, you know what is there to say、uh, about Todd McFarlane.、Uh, he was the best. He was the best. Uh, in toy making,、uh, and some people would say he was the best in comic book、uh, making in the nineties. And then,、uh, like many many great things, McFarlane went away, kind of faded into the woodwork. People thought never to return again, but he left behind a little or four. Little seedlings. The four horsemen.、Uh, this is not a biblical four horsemen. These are four very, very talented sculptors and designers that used to work for Todd McFarlane, and eventually decided to branch out on their own and started their own company called the Four Horsemen Studio. The four horsemen started to, at first, work for other companies. They help Mattel make their Masters of the Universe,、uh, reinventing the old action figures into something new and great.、Uh, they sculpted a lot of NECA's action figures, and eventually, the Four Horsemen decided, "Hey, we've been doing so good. We've been doing such a great job for McFarlane for other people. Let's make something for ourselves." So I believe this was back in 2013. Uh, the Four Horsemen came up with a completely original property of action figure that was not tied to any comic book or movie or anything. It was straight from their imagination, called Mythic Legions. Mythic Legion is a line of action figures that is split into、uh, several factions. You have demons, you have uh, uh, knights, and you have paladins. You have dwarves and Elves and rangers,、uh, and everyone's at war, and it's an ever-expanding universe of six to seven-inch action figures. You guys、uh, that seen the past episodes have seen a troll, a giant troll that I show. That's from the Mythic Legion line, and I definitely have shown other Mythic Legion action figures in the past. So I don't need to elaborate too much on. How much I love Mythic Legion and how successful it has been、uh, as a completely original property that is not shouldered or、uh, supported by、uh, media like cartoon or comic book. It is so successful, in fact, that there has been、uh, comic books that made a graphic novel that made about Mythic Legion after the toy line. And just now, just recently, they have turned it into a computer game、uh, where you can、uh, do tactics and fight and levels like a, like a, a role playing game, kind of like a, a World of Warcraft, I believe. So it, it has gotten big, and it's gotten it's getting bigger all the time. Now, fast forward.、Uh, To when I started to collect Mythic Legion action figures. Now, because these are custom、uh, um, action figures made to order, basically you can't just walk into a store and buy Mythic Legion. Most of the stores don't even know about Mythic Legion. You have to be、uh, a fan of the Four Horsemen Studio or be、uh, shopping at one of the very few stores that constantly stock their merchandise. To know about Mythic Legion, so these are very exclusive stuff,、uh, very very exclusive.、Um, so that means they are also a little bit more expensive than normal action figures. Usually, not not by a huge lot. Like、uh, normal uh, 
conventional Marvel superhero probably going to cost you like uh thirty dollar, while a Mythic Legion action figure would cost you somewhere like uh thirty five to forty. Uh, bigger figures would cost more, but yeah, they they are a little bit pricey, and I am not a very rich person, so a lot of time when a pre-order is announced, I don't have the money to get the figures I want. So I have to sit there, cry my eyes out. Well, okay, I don't really cry, but you know, I I, I sit there and cuss and stomp my foot and throw things and smash furniture and uh, while uh, I watch all the other people buy hundreds and hundreds of dollar worth of new Mythic Le- Legion warriors and characters while I am unable to take part in the pre-order. It, it is a lousy feeling to be reminded how poor you are, really. Uh, so anyway, a few uh, months ago, there was an announcement that one of the uh, pre-order series that I missed out on was going to come back and uh, be available on a special sale. Uh, and as soon as I heard that, I was so excited. There were several, actually like five, uh, figures I really wanted from that, uh, that, that, that wave that I missed out on. That was going to become available again. So I note down the date on my calendar and very eagerly saving money, saved up my money and just waiting for that day to come around. Well, finally, that day came around and wouldn't you know it, I had to uh, go do some fun stuff with uh, friends, with Kitten and with uh, some other friends went out to eat and have fun and do some karaoke. But no big deal, right? I mean, the, the, the uh, sales start at noon. So I thought if I get home by seven, that's more than enough. I mean, it, it should still be going on. At least I should be able to get some, some of the figures, if not all of them. I got back at seven, logged onto Four Horsemen website, Everything except one was sold out. Everything. Not even uh, with the exception that there wasn't even action figure parts or weapons left. Everything was sold out except one figure. A little blue demonic entity called Malifaire. You have no idea, or at least most of you would have no idea how it felt at that moment when I've been looking forward to this and saving up for this for months and then to have this happen. Uh, Seven hours after the start of the sale, everything I wanted was gone. Now, it did make me feel slightly better uh, when I heard from another collector friend that actually, never mind seven hours, everything was sold out 10 minutes after the sale. So that means even if I was home, I most likely wouldn't have a chance because if one thing that you guys don't know about is if you're blind, you navigate the internet a little bit slower than uh, a lot of people that can just click with their mouse. We actually have to listen to things being read to us and then make a decision on what to hit enter on, what to uh, double tap on and stuff like that. So it's slower. It really is. So trying to place an order within the 10 minute frame would have been impossible in any case. Anyway, that was a really, really sad day. Um, But I cheered myself up. I said, well, hey, at least there is Malifur, the little demon. And he was on my wanted list. So, uh, just to be a little bit spiteful, I went ahead and bought Malifur. I didn't buy just one Malifur. I bought three Malifur. Now, why would I do that? Some people would say, well, why the, in the world would you buy three of the same action figure? You, you just want to 
have, have a grudge against money? You just want to waste money or what? Well, not quite. Well, I had a very good reason to get three Malifer, and hopefully by the end of this review, you guys will see my reasoning. But enough talk. That is a really long preamble. Let's bring Malifer fully into the screen, and we'll take a look at this little demonic creature. Now, what is the story with Malifur? Since um, Mythic Legion is not tied into any known media or uh, uh, pop culture references, uh, this is uh, the basic info that we know about Malifur. Malifur belongs to the Legion of Erisur. Uh, who is Erisur? Erisur is this really big, badass, demon lord that's been banished from this world and his faction, his legion, has their goal for the whole war, during the whole war, is to uh, bring their lord back into this world so he can try to take over the world. So he's like the dark god, dark lord uh, kind of deal, Erisur. Um, Erisur's legion is mostly comprised of trolls and ogres and orcs and uh, uh, some very heavy hitting, heavy hitters, uh, heavy duty uh, warriors uh, like goblins and um, a lot of other uh, big beasties that you commonly see in fantasy world. Finally, uh, Erisur was brought back into this world. Uh, this is where the story is at this point. Uh, with his return, there were rifts, portals, ripped open between our time, our realm, and the demon realm. Uh, basically, the, the world we live in became very unstable because of Erisur's power and his evil influence on our world. Uh, so he's not the only one that came through. He brought with him a whole lot of demon soldiers and warriors with him from the other side. Among these were a whole troop, a whole regiment of lesser demons. What are lesser demons? Lesser demons are little goblin-sized demons with sharp fangs and uh, wings and barbed poisonous tails and uh, just wicked and uh, annoying and chaotic and dangerous uh, and leading these lesser demons is Malifur. So Malifur is like the commander of lesser demon, is a lord of lesser demon. Uh, he of course is a demon himself as you can see on the screen. Malifur is quite short. Uh, we'll see how short he is when we bring a human-sized character in for size comparison, but off the top of my head, I would say he's about five inches tall, uh, maybe a little bit more, but not much. Uh, he's basically the size of a goblin, and he had big curving horns on the side of his head. These horns are beautiful. They are iridescent, uh, iridescent purple. They have like a purple uh, coloration, uh, really, uh, contrasting with his reptilian blue skin uh, in his mouth. He has a whole mouth full of yellow jagged teeth. It's just a very, very expressive, very demonic looking head uh, with those giant horns that curve down and uh, his uh, uh, bumpy, gnarly, wrinkly skin and the blue hue on his skin uh, going down. He has a spiky armor uh, around his neck that make it look like uh, giant fangs that come out to the side of his face. And on his body, he wears golden colored chain mail armor under heavier plate. These plates have a dark wash and they look all dinged and battered like this demon has been through a lot of war and which he probably has if he is a commander of the lesser demons. Uh, he also uh, is sporting some uh, leather armor uh, on his lower torso 
And the whole thing is just uh, very well put together. This is a very uh, sturdy figure. Even though he looks small, he is actually quite heavy in your hand because he has so much details packed in and he's quite solid. Turning him around, we see that on his back he has a pair of quite large leathery uh, demonic wings and they are blue, just like the rest of his skin color. And on, going down his back, we can see a long curved tail. This tail is a soft material, kind of bendy like rubber. Unfortunately, there's no wire inside, so it doesn't hold its poses. Uh, and while we're here, I want to give you guys one quick note that when you first get Malifor in the package, he the wings are not attached, the tail is not attached. Now the wings are easy, there are holes on, in his back that you just plug the wing into, that's very obvious. If you are not familiar with the construction of uh, these Mythic Legion guys, you might find yourself wondering where the heck does the tail go? Because at first, there's no obvious place to plug in his tail. Uh, there is a tiny piece of armor on his butt that you have to pry loose with your fingernail. You can take that out and that will expose a hole where you... a hole. Uh, anyway, no, let's not dwell on that. Uh, uh, it will expose a place for you to plug the tail into. Turning him to the side so we can see a profile, we see more of that uh, dented, battered looking armor. And more importantly, uh, I hope you guys can see uh, the tip of his tail. That tail is wicked. That is, there's a lot of wicked looking barbs on, his, on the end of his tail. I like action figure uh, details that kind of make your imagination go wild, like body parts or accessories that kind of tell the story without needing to. I mean, when I uh, felt that tail, that the tip of that tail, immediately I was thinking of some horrendous thing this demon would do to uh, his enemy. I, what, can you imagine? getting stabbed with that tail, and then when he pulled that out, it would just basically rip everything out from the inside. That would be some crazy way to get killed by a demon. Uh, so that one scary looking tail, uh, seriously. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see down, but if you look down far enough, you'll see that uh, he got tiny little demon hooves, uh, rather than traditional or conventional feet. Now, uh, of course, this is probably at the point where uh, one of the questions I get asked very often by people who don't know about Mythic Legion, or people who don't collect Mythic Legion. Uh, the question is, okay, so we get it. Okay, the, the, the figure itself is kind of cool, and uh, it's a cool story. It has some cool characters, but still, you, you are getting something that is uh, made by someone uh, who is not catering to mass production. You have to go through such a hard time getting these figures. They are expensive and sometimes they sell out like crazy and even when you have the money, you can't get them. Is it worth the stress? What makes it worth that kind of stress just to get some uh, action figure that no one ever heard of? before. Uh, so Malifor here, for example, he's a, okay, yeah, he's a cool little demon. He looked pretty interesting. Uh, he got really cool looking tail and wings, but is it justified? Is it, is it worth it to spend $30, $40 and then shipping on top of that? And then the stress of having to find him uh, and, and get him at the right time in the right place. What makes collecting Mythic Legion a thing? Uh, because as far as I understand, many, many people who collect action figures collect them because 
it reminds them of something they like. Like people who like Superman, they want to have Superman action figure. And of course, when you have Superman action figure, you need to have enemies for Superman. And you want Lois Lane, and you want the uh, 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 Superman's friend. And uh, okay, now that you got Superman, you might as well get the whole Justice League, uh, Superman's allies, and then you got to get Justice League enemies, and so on and so on. Uh, people who like Batman, they collect Batman, and then they need an enemy for Batman. People who collect X-Men or Deadpool or Incredible Hulk. Same thing. It's usually the same pattern. Or people collect action figures that remind them of a movie actor or actress uh, that that they like. And usually it ties into something recognizable, something that triggers a memory, which is not the case with Mythic Legion. Because these things are not tied into any property. Uh, they are just generic demons or knights or warriors, a story you never heard of. Uh, that they, so when they sell Mythic Legion, they sell them on the pure strength of the character and the design of the action figure. So what makes it worth it? What 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 makes it a thing to collect these uh, action figure that is so unconventional? Uh, let me show you because. Uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and Malifer here, yes, he is very small, yes, he is quite expensive, uh, yes, he is not very famous, but he comes with enough accessories to make you feel that the $35 you spend on this guy is well worth uh, spending it. But before we look at accessories, I want to quickly uh, run you guys through the uh, uh, joints, articulations on Mythic Legion characters. Uh, they are not quite as articulated as Marvel Legends, but they are very, very articulated. Uh, little Malifer here, the neck can turn, it's on the bow peg, so he can turn his head, nod his head up and down, shoulder can lift and go on to the side, uh, bicep can turn, elbow can bend, wrist can turn, and as you guys can see, the wing uh, can go out to the side, like he's spreading his wing. Now, even the tip of the wings are uh, jointed, so you can get a few different poses out of the tip of his wing. His hips and his knees and ankles are also very well articulated, allowing him to go into some squatting, pouncing, uh, low stances. Uh, so overall, he is not going to compete with Spider-Man, but he is a heck of a lot more uh, nimble and articulated than something, let's say, like uh, the previous two action figures we've shown, the Blair Witch, or the pumpkin head. Completing his image of a demon lord, even though he's really small, Malover, you know, even though even, even when you're small, you have to be respectable. Uh, probably, especially when you're small. Uh, Malover comes with a gigantic trident uh, or pitchfork. I think that's a trident. I think pitchfork you only have two uh, times at the end. I mean, three times is a pitchfork, uh, trident. Uh, so he comes with this gigantic trident that is over seven inches long, a lot taller than him, actually. So it's kind of uh, interesting how he would pick a weapon so gigantic. Maybe some kind of a, a complex there, little demon guy. But anyway, um, just a very nice looking weapon uh, in his hand and definitely complete that a little blue devil creature look for him. Now, of course, if he only comes with this trident, if he only comes with this trident, then maybe he wouldn't really be worth the money and the hassle and the stress one would have to go, go through to get him. But there is more, and a lot more, to this guy. In addition to the, in addition to the trident, Malifor comes with this 
brutal-looking short sword with a curved silver blade and coppery-looking handle. Uh, the sword doesn't have much of a guard. Actually, it looks a little bit like a gigantic butcher knife. Uh, I'm sure I have a knife, a butcher knife here in the kitchen. But if you magnify it three times, it will look something like this.、Uh, so that fits very nicely in his hand, and definitely give him a few different options. I say a few different options because there is more、uh, on top of the trident. If the trident and the short sword is not enough to get the job done, Malifor also comes with a brutal-looking axe. For his other hand, the axe has a wood textured wood、uh, looking handle, and the head of the axe is that same coppery、uh, color. Maybe that's supposed to be blood、uh, as the handle of the short sword. As if having three weapons、uh, is still not enough, there is more and a lot more. And this is where we go back to why I wanted to buy three Malifor rather than just one. You see, Malifor, in addition to his weapons, also comes with enough additional part for you to build a new character out of what is there. For example, when you take off his demon head, he comes with a helmeted head. That can make him look completely different, and turn him into a different character. The helmeted head totally changes the look of this character, and、uh, it sports a pair of very majestic-looking、uh, wings on the side of the helmet. That、uh, kind of、uh, a little bit reminiscent of、uh, some version of the Dark Multiverse Batman. A Dark Knight's figure and their Batman-inspired、uh, helmet configuration. Now, after you swap out the head, then we got to get rid of the wings. And in place of the wings, there are a pair of shoulder armors to put on this action figure. Without the giant demon head, the giant horns, and the giant wings. Malifor is no longer Malifor. Now this looks like a little goblin-sized armored creature with majestic helmet, a pair of shoulder armor, and there's even a black strap across his chest so he can carry his weapon on. But this is not the end. We still have to get rid of that tail. With the tail gone and the little sword sheathed on his back. And the axe in his hand, and the posture is no longer hunched over like、uh, the original Malifor. This is no longer Malifor, the Demon Lord. What we have here is a very generic armored foot soldier of the lesser demons. Which means now I have one Malifor and two、uh, de demon soldiers, two little henchmen. For him to command in battle, really, really cool.、Uh, I almost feel that somewhere down the line, it wouldn't surprise me if the Four Horsemen re-release this figure with more head, more armor option, so you can really build an army of lesser demons.、Uh, but for now,、uh, it, it is very cool that you can actually get two、uh, characters out of this one. Actually, if you want to be more creative. Uh, you can get more than two looks out of this. You can have a, a helmeted foot soldier、uh, with tail. You can have a helmeted foot soldier without tail.、Uh, you can have、uh, a helmeted foot soldier with only one shoulder armor、uh, or without a weapon strap. It's all up to you how you want to、uh, customize your Mythic Legion characters. And this is not the only Mythic Legion guy that have this. Kind of a awesome accessory and capability.、Uh, there has been a lot of other figures in the whole Mythic Legion lineup that allow you to,、uh, with a few simple swaps of armor pieces and head, and、uh, sometimes wings, and you can get 
uh, a totally different character out of uh, the one that you buy. And this also, obviously, uh, is meant to encourage you to buy more than one. Finding one is difficult enough, so sometimes that doesn't always work out. But anyway, I hope that uh, after looking at today's review, you guys have gained a new understanding of why some of us go out of our way, get stressed out about collecting uh, a line of action figure that almost no one ever heard of. Uh, Mythic Legion is going very strong. If you have never heard of it, go out onto Four Horsemen Studios website uh, and or you can find Mythic Legion action figures on BigBadToyStore.com but be warned, if you buy it from there, it costs about $15 more than if you pre-order them from the Four Horsemen themselves. Have a happy and safe Halloween. Uh, Kid and I will be back tomorrow with Fitness Friday. For now, have a good night.